Hey everybody, welcome back to the Joe Blow Movie Show podcast. I'm Editor-in-Chief Paul Shirey, joined with my comrades in and arms. And I'm Chris Bumbre. And Sean Wist. And I'm Sean Wist. And we're all here to talk movies and nothing else. That's it. We know and friendship. And friendship. And friendship. And I'm Sean Wist. <laughs> Sean is here. Thank, <laughs> thank God. I'm uh, here to offer some comforting <laughs> silence while these two fuckers like, uh, talk ad nauseum about movies and shit. Chris is going to want to talk a couple movies that he saw, and we're going to try not to let him I talk saw a couple. Long. I saw a couple movies. Biased bastard. I am biased. I, know, I, I imagine that a biased film critic. Ugh. How dare you, sir? How dare you? You're just supposed to review the film. I I am reviewing the film. No, My you're just supposed to talk about the art. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get into that story. later, though, because I have comments oh. at the ready, and I can't wait to to read a few of them. My uh, my girlfriend's been calling me cuntface ever since uh, that, that <laughs> comment came up on the YouTube review of, uh, of Power Rangers. It's her new oh. name for me. Chris Cuntface. I That's like gonna be cunt tough. Face. That's gonna be tough to do graphics for. <laughs> Chris Cuntface. We'll probably get a strike. All right, so well, we are here to talk about some uh, movies and some news because that's what we yeah. do here. Uh, so let's get into it. So today there was a uh, pretty big news story in. Well, I wouldn't say it's epic just yet, but um, something that it was people one of those wait, on. when it came up when it popped. Did you scream? Stop the presses! No, no, no. In fact, I had saw people rumbling about it, and I was like, what? What's going on? And so I Do we own down. any presses to stop? Because that could be an issue. <laughs> stop the presses! I, we don't have presses. Don't stop something! We, this is important. Stop something. <laughs> stop traffic! Get it right outside your door and stop somebody. Listen here, everybody. Michael Shannon is the front runner to play Cable. Which Turn makes sense engines. if you think about it, though. I think it's a it's a perfectly and it's not a, a choice that I really ever considered just because I think we've been kind of lambasted with so many other choices that his name never really even really seemed to register. Makes sense though. But yeah, you're right. It does. It's a sensible, and I don't mean that in like a, oh, it's a you know he's fine. I mean it's like a a very good selection. He's got that. And he likes money. He likes <laughs> he likes money. He's what? got that oddness. So biased. He's got that oddness about him, but he's, you know, he, I think he can do the dry humor that is going to re- be required of Cable yeah, to play definitely. off of Ryan Reynolds. And I think ultimately that's a, one of the biggest uh, check marks that have to be met here for, for the Deadpool sequel is that Cable needs to be able to work off of Deadpool and all his fucking insanity with some measure of you know, comedy, but also, you know, still being kind of the straight man, but like a dry straight man that is actually in on the joke. You know what I'm saying? And I feel... A dry straight man. A dry straight man. That's what we're looking for. I feel like they could also, if they wanted to spin it off, which I'm sure they do, he could carry his own film, I think. Sure. I mean, he has before. He's carried other movies that were, you know, without much trouble. So I could see, I could totally see them going that way if they decided that that was something that they wanted to do. And... You know, I think that studio likes money, so <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe you know, they'll spin it up. Studios do. Why not? Uh, they enjoy I think money. A, I think it's a good choice, and I actually like it better than some of the the other more obvious ones that have been floated around. Um, I like him in the role a lot more than I like David Harbour in the role. Yeah, same here. David Harbour, he seemed like an interesting, fun choice, but I was never like, oh yeah, Cable completely. You know, well, I just uh, I'd like a movie star in the role, like somebody who, you know, wow, you know, because the thing is, even if I don't like Deadpool 2, because I didn't like Deadpool 1 that much, you're a piece you know, of shit. I, uh, I know I'm a piece of shit. I'm a horrible person. Face. I know I'm a horrible person. <laughs> they call me Chris Cuntface for a reason. But um, <laughs> it, it, I, am I Shannon? Cuntface? Yeah. Cuntface. Oh, yeah cunt. But, uh, you know, he would be. An interesting guy to watch, though I think Michael Shannon. You know, no, but he kind of can make any movie interesting. So yeah, it'd be fun, and I, I like. I think he's. I, I would be willing to bet that he's uh, just about locked for the role. Yeah, I, th- I think it'll work out. It seems like too good of maybe an idea I, not to maybe work. Maybe I know things. I don't know. We'll see. You know, I want. I really want to see uh, Shannon play Cable because I know you. You're a big fan of the movie, Paul. I don't know how you feel about this specific choice chris but like i thought he was horribly miscast in man of steel and i want to see michael shannon do a a 
a really good comic book movie role because I, I usually love him, but I didn't like him at all in Man of Steel. Mm, I didn't I didn't have a problem with him in Man of Steel, and I love Man of Steel. So I mean, I, without without any, I have no issues with Man of Steel at all. It's one of there's the, just something about him that was just like whiny and kind of I don't know. It's well, just he like, was he, he didn't was kind of strike whiny. me as a general of men like he's just like this whiny boy i will find him you know it's just like all right fine, but yeah i don't know i liked his intensity uh, he had like some pretty good intensity in there he was better I, if, I think i think zod was a better villain than than what you would get out of a lot pretty much all of the marvel comic book movies and i'm not that i'm trying to play some dc vs marvel war here but i'm just saying like i felt his villain yeah was but a little that's more. how bad superhero movie villains have gotten though that he is really by far I think the both best probably apply, prob- yeah. I think he's probably the best villain since Heath Ledger in in, in, in in the Dark Knight, but that's you know, just goes to show you how weak they are. And that's a pretty low scale too in that yeah. Because Heath Ledger's like yeah. tapped out at the at the top. So yeah. But yeah, I agree. I mean and that's something that I think we'll talk we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk when we talk some Iron Fist. So anyways, uh, speaking of more stuff, more franchises, one franchise we were not going to see any more of, apparently, is the Terminator franchise. Yeah, okay, give it a couple years. They're never going to let that die. Well, let's let's cover what it is, and then let, we'll see. So basically, what we're hearing, uh, and this was, re- I believe, reported with New York Daily News had a source, so I don't know how reliable this, this may or may a not source. be. A source for New York Daily News. So take of that, course. again, with a grain of salt, but... There is one thing that that is a fact is that we haven't heard jack shit about the Terminator franchise going anywhere. Uh, there's no real movement other than the last we heard was that uh, Tim Miller was potentially going to do a reboot. But uh, apparently that looks like it's it's kind of on the chopping block at this point. Um, and they're basically saying that it's not likely that Terminator is coming back. Schwarzenegger and Amelia Clark were signed to do more films, but apparently they're not asking them back. So they don't want anything to do with them uh, or they don't want to continue them. I figured, though, that Amelia Clark and Jai Courtney were never going to come back. Well, I can't believe you didn't want Jai Courtney back. Well, I just figured, though, that that, that aspect, that framing... The layers he brought to the role of <laughs> oh, Kyle yeah. Reese yeah, Oh, my God. Yeah, of course. Immeasurable. He has his yes. fans, though. It's weird. There are there's a weird little fan cult around him, which is strange. There really is. There no there is absolutely a fan cult around Jai Courtney. So yeah, we could talk um, shit all day long, but in the end, there's yeah. plenty of people. And I don't hate I don't hate the guy at all. You know, I mean, no, I just yeah, he's bland. He just hasn't done anything. I, I thought he was at his best uh, with Boomerang and Suicide Squad. Strangely enough, but you know, um, it's, I agree it, with that. It was like yeah. strange enough where he could actually give it some life. You know, yeah, he was. It, it was like the first time where he was playing a character, not just playing Jay Courtney. So, yeah, yeah I agree. But, it, but um, I mean, anyways, I, I don't they think also anybody said anybody ever thought though that Terminator Genesis that they were going to ever really make a legit sequel to that. Well, I mean, but I figured thing, if they were going to make a Terminator, it would be like a spinoff though. Even well, it Tim raked Miller in three hundred million in profits, which is not chump change. Um, and it, the the plan was to continue from the initial. If you remember in the initial get go, like yes, we're going to continue, we're going to do more, but now it's not. Um, and I think ultimately they had looked at Genesis as being being that movie, being the the franchise revival, but it just it didn't happen, and people no. are just because uh, it sucked, not into it. <laughs> yeah, you're just not into it. And has Alan Alan Taylor directed anything since? I did not uh, not a film. I feel like his name got scratched off a lot of lists after that came out. <laughs> like, ooh, we don't like the genius. You know, I was so. like, I was excited for Taylor to do Thor: uh, The Dark World. Oh yeah, and I he thought he great. did an okay job, but you know, I, and I was like looking at his Game of Thrones resume. I was like, oh, that would be that's perfect for Thor. Nothing against um, him. I think he's as good as his material, and his material wasn't good on either of those movies. Well, he's not like I a just, Taika Watiki who could probably bring something really interesting to the well, table. Well, I mean, I think that's just it. And I think, you know, when you look at, like, he comes from Game of Thrones, it's kind of like, well, yeah, he's like a guy that gets shit done, but he's yeah, not he's a, a point visionary and shoot filmmaker. Yeah, he's, he's not, a point-and-shoot guy. Yeah, and I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just that unless, you know... Well, Sometimes that, that's right? what so you need. It. I mean, if the script is really good, you know, yeah. then maybe a journeyman yeah. director isn't the worst And thing. yeah, not to get on like a Thor thing, but I think that's why 
the the new Thor movie is going to work out so well because like for example the Dark World they just try to tap into like stereotypical like Thor territory but yeah. Taika is probably going to bring out those eccentricities that we've been missing from the Thor movies. Oh, Thor was question. a bore. Without question. <laughs> and show people like, hey, this character can be fun, and we can have a lot of fun with his universe as well. I like fun. Yeah, I mean, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I, I really think Thor Ragnarok is going to be the comic book movie to beat this year. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to fucking amaze people. So we'll see. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. I don't know. But anyways, uh, I will say for me, I... I I don't. Do we need more Terminator movies? Do we? I mean, do we really need them? And no, we that, never. We didn't need a Terminator movie after Terminator Two. That was it. It was kind of done after that for me, anyway. Yeah, and I mean, I mean it was do we perfect. need Schwarzenegger as the Terminator again? Like, oh, he's what, getting way new, too old. But what new yeah, would he bring to it? What would? What's left to bring to that role for him, other than just a paycheck and cashing in on the nostalgia? There's really nothing there. Like and what? You know, as much I think as the I Genesis love is actually a pretty decent try. Like, hey, he's an aging Terminator and this and that. And I thought that was explained well enough. But at the same time, it just it it, it still was still boring. Like, we still didn't give a fuck. I, I have like, to say something though. Like, it didn't bring anything though. new. Say as much as much as I love Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I'm I'm truly a fan of his. I've been a fan of his my you know my whole life. But um, the, for me, the Schwarzenegger that came back after his hiatus, where he was governor, not the same. <laughs> It's not, no. And it's just he doesn't have the same charisma that he did when he was doing, you know, in his heyday. I mean, I, I always thought he was, you know, underrated as, 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 as an actor even in his, in his movies. I mean, he always gave a sturdy performance. He could be charismatic as hell, like in True Lies, Terminator 2, fantastic, you know, total recall. But then he came back. He didn't have the same, he didn't have the same energy when he came back. I, I could tell right away when I saw The Last Stand, you know, and it was just he yeah. hasn't done – he hasn't – even in Terminator Genesis, you know, he tries. I think he's trying, but he doesn't have the same thing that he did. That, that he you did, know, like that star power. He doesn't have that quality like he used to. And there's also that, and plus all the movies he's been given, they don't measure up to what he's done before either. No, not they at don't all. don't have anything very interesting to offer. And you know what shocked me is that he used to be a guy that would like chase some, some good directors. You know, he'd be like... You know, he was, he was looking to involve himself with stuff. And that wasn't all the time. Don't get me wrong. But he, he chased, you know, kind of like the way Cruz, you know, Tom Cruise will just go out and he's like, yeah. I'm going to work with this director, this director, this director. Like, he's just checking off the fucking block. You know, he's worked with almost everyone. But Arnold just feels like he's, he's like, oh, well, you know, whoever, whatever, you know, whoever you get, that's fine. Anyways, Terminator franchise is terminated. It's terminated. Yeah. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. But Hasta you know what? I have vista, a feeling. Terminator. It'll be back in some form or another. They never might, Hollywood isn't good why? enough to let franchises die. Well, speaking of that, we also heard yesterday that there are more Ghostbusters films being developed, as per Ivan Reitman, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, surprisingly in his comments was was asked about it, and he said this, and I'm going to read it just because I think it's important for everyone to hear it uh, to get a feel for it. But uh, he talked about basically that he was disappointed in the Ghostbusters reboot, and this is what he had to say. We certainly would have loved to have a larger hit, but considering the last film was almost 30 years ago, it really did extremely well. I think the film cost too much, frankly, and that's the real issue. I personally had other points of view in terms of where the film should go, and it was kind of a, a continuous conversation with Paul Fagg about that. But Paul was the filmmaker on this one, and he's a very talented director. I wanted to give him enough room to do the film he thought it should be. And that, to me, sounds like... You know, <laughs> I didn't really like the film, but he also went on to say, we jumped into an animated film after the last movie and we are developing live action films. I want to bring all these stories together as a universe that makes sense within itself. Part of my job right now is to do that. So there you have it. So I think that uh, in itself says that, you know, Reitman is definitely involved in more Ghostbusters films, but it almost sounds like he's trying to write the ship as well. I don't think that they're ever going to make another one, to be honest. Why not? I think that if they were to make another one, and let's say um, they were to drop the cast from the last one and make um, a mixed Ghostbusters team or something like that, people would be upset. You know, the, the, the people that loved the, the last Ghostbusters movie that defended it, you know, I think in our PC culture, too, people would be kind of attacking it, saying, oh, it's back to status quo, we're doing this, we're doing that, blah, blah, blah. They'd have to get a really good filmmaker and a really strong take, and it'd be very, very dependent on how it was cast. You don't think that could happen? 
I think whoever would whoever would take that on, I think would be would be getting themselves in for so much shit that I, I couldn't see anybody wanting to do it really at this point. You know, what I if you had this. like Edgar Wright directing with a mixture of male and female cast? It'd be interesting. I just don't think that I could see Edgar Wright doing that, though. I don't think he'd ever want to do that. I'm just saying, I'm playing the what if game. What if? The what if game? Yeah, sure. Like, fuck, that's awesome. I mean, hell, you know what? I would like to see the 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 uh, Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Wiig and and McKinnon and and Jones back. Maybe with somebody else. Oh, we know somebody else. We know you. Maybe some. Maybe. Maybe you know if if people didn't like Paul Feig's take as much, maybe you know, let somebody. You know the thing is, if it was another franchise and the movie had done the kind of business that it did, which was pretty good, but the reviews weren't great, they would have just replaced the director. They wouldn't have just they wouldn't have replaced the entire cast. Well, so there is that. So I don't know. So maybe bring in another director and let's see how they do. I think they want to do ultimately that. it needs if they want to continue making Ghostbusters. And again, you have to ask that question, same as you have to do with Terminator. Do we need more? No, we don't. Can we more. survive without them? Is it something I'm that's sh- like, why are we sure not tapping this well? Or can we just go go on with our lives? I think we could probably go on with our lives. But I will say this. I think that if you truly diversified the cast, because hiring all females is not diversification. But if you truly diversified the, cl- the cast and got some guys in there, mix in some of the girls, you can use the existing ones or you know start fresh, whatever you want to do. Um, I think that would actually add it. And why does it have to be four? You know, have more. Look at the, you know, look at the Marvel films and the DC films. You know, they're, you know, they're fitting in a lot of people into the, into these, uh, these franchise films. There's no reason you couldn't do that with Ghostbusters. You know, I don't think that's I would the make, kind of movie. I would make that... Chris Hemsworth's character, character a Ghostbuster. And I would, I would probably shift a little more focus to him, even though he's kind of a dummy, but you know, you could, you could always work around that too. Um, but, you know, throw in some other guys that are funny. I always thought, like, I had, like, this team in mind when they were getting ready to make I was like, man, you guys should have, like, Aziz Ansari would be a really fun Ghostbuster. I just, I, I like Aziz Ansari. I think he'd be really funny. If you're trying to, like, diversify and not just hire, you know, four white dudes again, that's fine. Um, but, you know, get some white dudes, get Aziz Ansari, get a black guy, get an Asian guy, whatever. I don't give a fuck, you know, but mix it up for real. Don't just, you know, throw in four females and say, hey, this is all new and we were fucking leading the charge in progressiveness. And all this, they kind of, I think they really fell on, they got threw themselves under the bus in trying to like basically parade this. Uh, yeah. The, but you know, the their fan are... reaction was ridiculous though. It really oh, was. Sure. Even, even mean, the, even on. the comments on, on the review ad that I wrote. And you know, and the thing is, if you look you at all the movies that, that came you are out a last summer. Cunt face. Yes, I am. But you know, if you look at the movies though, that came out last summer, I'm sorry. Ghostbusters is one of the better of the summer blockbusters. It's I didn't hate Ghostbusters. I, I thought it was fine. I enjoyed it. Yeah, um, it was a, it was a well made, energetic movie, and that's more than I can say for pretty much you know almost any other. It was other better than. This is where I have to insert the opposing opinion because like I was called. fine with the cast and everything, but I thought it was a fucking horrible movie. It wasn't funny. I think you're a horrible so. boy. See, yeah. I didn't. See, I didn't that's think the problem. It was, see, like I didn't think there it was people hilarious. who hated the movie because they are like, oh, this feminist agenda bullshit. But like, I wasn't a part of that. Yeah. I just thought it was a horrible movie. Period. Yeah, that's and it. and there yeah. are people, and that's a legitimate, uh, legitimate sure. feeling to say, "Hey, I didn't like it because it was a bad movie." But you know, this day and age, you can't say you like or dislike anything without you know somebody slapping a label on you. you I know? think if people though didn't like the movie, I think you know the blame shouldn't go to the four Ghostbusters. I think it should go to Paul Feig because he wrote and directed it. I, agree. And I think he's more responsible for it than anybody else. Well, he but, is, I mean, but I, I think that keep, I don't think the keep... cast was spot on perfect either. Uh, but they were okay. None of them were, were bad. Okay, they were all, but they were okay. They McKinnon weren't like, oh, great. they were great. It was like they were they were all right. They I thought fun. McKinnon was pretty great. I liked McKinnon, but then she there were parts where it, you could tell it was just Paul F- Paul Feig just leaving the camera on. Well, and I was yeah, like, all these movies are like that, though. All Judd Apatow's movies are like that, too. So. But like, yeah, these, but those like, previous the efforts were better. like a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, like Spy was I, Spy was a blast. I enjoyed Spy, spy was very amazing. Much. I that, that caught is a, me completely off guard. Yeah, me too. And that was like a legitimately funny, probably Jay, one of Jason Statham's best films, strangely enough. Oh, definitely. Um, like, yeah. I want to see more Spy. Fuck Ghostbusters. Yeah, I mean, really, Fig would have been better off just making a sequel to Spy than, than working on mm-hmm. Ghostbusters. But so speaking of that, I'm going to jump into a different topic before the one that's on our agenda, since this kind of flows right into it. But we talked about the Matrix reboot, right? We talked about that last week, right? Nope. We didn't. Nope. We that did. happened. That that news came out after we recorded. Surprise. Well, 
fuck me gently with a chainsaw. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyways, we'll, 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 we'll hit that real quick. I'm sure everybody already that's listening knows. But anyways, there was talk. Uh, What's based the on Matrix? Early report that said the Matrix was going to be. You can't re- be told what it is, Chris. Rebooted slash relaunched. And then it was clarified that it was just being relaunched in some form or fashion. Then screenwriter Zach Penn, who is apparently working <laughs> on it, went out and said, this is not a reboot or a relaunch. This is something else entirely. Um, and then it came down that uh, the rumor is that this is going to be focused on young Morpheus, potentially played by Michael B. Jordan. Uh, and then there was a little more today that basically stated that they're looking to make a Matrix cinematic universe, plain and simple. Ugh. With various types of spinoffs and a Matrix universe of films, if you will. Oh, God, just hearing that makes me want to vomit. So <laughs> that's everything that's wrong with Hollywood these days. You know that? I mean, it's everything uh, is uh, about world building and yeah, just let it franchise. die. Just let it go. I mean, it was, you know, I, I really, I, I can't see them ever doing a matrix movie without the Wachowskis involved. Yeah. It does feel kind of, it just feels, feels just way too premature ridiculous. for that. Ridiculous. Now, but I will say this. I have seen the Animatrix. Have you guys seen the Animatrix? I have too, but yes. they were they were involved though. The Wachowskis were involved. Right, right, but no, no, but that's but that's not my point. My point is that there are an infinite number of stories you could tell within the Matrix universe. Mm-hmm. Do they all need to be told? Does it need no. to be some kind of cinematic universe? Not necessarily, but I will say that it does have potential. I do think it does have potential. To exploit some talent, if you wanted to bring some other people in that were, but they've got to be skilled visionary directors. Not they're not going to hire Alan Taylor to do. Uh, so not a, a not piece of Zach this. not Zach Penn then basically. Well, and and he's well, he's not he wouldn't be directing, but I think that there's potential to do something cool. But I'm not going to mm-hmm. hold my breath that that's what's going to come to fruition. However, the fact remains that there is a lot of shit they can do based on what the Wachowskis themselves established. From the get go, from and, and just watching the Animatrix will show you, even just you know, hint at the massive amount of potential that they could. Oh, I don't know. I, I just with. really it gives me a bad feeling. I just really feel that nobody should do it except the Wachowskis. Now, if they wanted to come back and take a whack at it, you know, and do some kind of prequel in that universe, and they wanted to tell the Morpheus story with Michael with Michael uh, B. Jordan, great. I think it would sound. I think it would be really cool. But I don't I know. I think it would I be more exciting to hear that. But I, then again, I if I heard see a, it. Uh, yeah, if I heard I a talent that signed on that sounded like somebody like, oh shit, that sounds pretty good, yeah. then it, it could change. Yeah, my, sure. My yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I just it leaves bad taste in my mouth. I think, uh, but yeah, if it was a really interesting director, then maybe, um, and you know, and a really good writer as well. I, I don't know. It just it's it, it rubs me the wrong way though, thinking that the Wachowskis aren't involved. If they were to come on though as producers or something and give it their blessing, I'd be fine with it. It's just it feels to me like they're really going. Why would you be fine with wishes. that? That blessing could just be in the form of a fucking. Yeah, but even payment. still, though, that's fine. Even that, that's fine. You know, it just it feels like that's their baby, though. And Cameron, if Cameron endorsed take... Terminator Genesis. Yeah, by sure, the way. but you know what? But that made it okay in a way. I don't like those movies, but it was still not. You know, it didn't give me as bad a feeling as it does with the Matrix, though, where I feel like it's being taken from them. At least if I knew that they were getting something for it and were somewhat okay with it then that would be something. It's just, I don't know, I feel like it's really, for me, the, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't even like the sequels. I loved no, the first Matrix like movie, but I didn't either. care for the sequels, but still, I respect the fact that that was their vision, you know, and this is their universe. And I just don't think anybody should mess with it unless they, they're they they're okay with it. But it just sounds think, like a, it just sounds like a big cash grab. Yeah, well, there you have it. Franchises, franchises. Speaking of another uh, newly awakened franchise that will come out this friday we have the power rangers movie finally here everybody's go, been waiting go power with bated breath i actually um, am surprised at how many people though were texting me or messaging me on facebook um when i posted that i was seeing that movie asking me how it was i mean mm-hmm. people that you would have never thought would have been into power rangers which amazes me because that show is fucking garbage but more on that later <laughs> Anyways, Bias. yes, we will talk some more about Power Rangers here in a minute. But uh, the first thing we're going to talk about here is that, uh, I guess, I mean, this is a thing for some, and I get it. Um, I will discuss at length. But apparently they're, one of the characters, Becky G, who is the Yellow Ranger, is a LGBT, i.e. AKA gay, gay as AKA shit. AKA gay, <laughs> or discovering that she's gay, and that R.J. Seiler's character, uh, who plays the Blue Ranger... 
uh, is autistic or has been diagnosed with autism. On the um, spectrum, that's what they say in the movie. On the spectrum. On the spectrum. So, and you've I'm seen sorry. now you've seen the movie, Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I have seen the movie. Explain to me the how they do they does it seem obvious that that Becky G's character is struggling with her sexual identity or is this something that, uh, is, you know, or is I this mean, like I, the, I, the what's, uh, what's his name in beauty and the beast where it's like, that's it. <laughs> did you, see, did you see beauty and the beast by the way? Yeah. I, yeah. He, he just dances with a, with yeah. a dude for like, and I don't a, understand. A and I don't, and I don't understand why anybody had a problem with that though. I, it's <laughs> so like, I didn't even give it, I was like waiting for this moment where they like make out or something. And, it was like he just really? happened. He it was like in any like other. In the <laughs> I thought he was just going to be given a blowjob in the like, fucking oh, dance oh, 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 sequence. I was kind of, I was kind of hoping that that would be. And it was. I thought it was very innocent when I saw it. I was like, well, this is super innocent. Dude, it was I mean, beyond innocent. And if nobody even was, said anything, like, a like cute, oh hey, like he's a, gay. It was, it was like I wouldn't a, have even thought a, he was gay. I would just it, thought, oh, he's well, a goofy no, character, and he yeah, ended up it, it, in this dance number with a guy. Big deal. Yeah, at the end, you'd be like, oh, it's a cute moment, you know. It's a cute, happy moment. He's a much more likable character. But I guess yeah, it was it was funny. That... It was funny, but it was cute. You know, it was likable. I don't know. It was it was a lot. You know. Anyway, okay, whatever. so back to Becky G. Yes. Is it okay? Pro- uh, is it... No, you know, it makes sense. I mean, I think that fits into the movie probably better than the autism thing for what I'll get into later. But it's just the, um, I mean. Uh, they, they, it's a very quick mention. She's just, she seems like she's struggling with some stuff in the movie with her family. And, uh, at the end, at one point they're sitting around a fire and the, and the guy that had that as a crush on her, he's like, uh, guy problems. And then she's like, no. And then he goes, oh, girl problems. And then she's like, well, maybe. And that's pretty much as far as it goes. Hmm. That's it. Yeah. She says, it's I'm kind having, of like, I'm, she just says, I'm figuring, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm just figuring things out. I'm not sure, you know, what you I You know, feel. and here's the thing. I f- I think that's totally fine, cool, uh whatever. But I do think that like ultimately I think the way the internet handles news like this is it makes it into a bigger thing than it really is. Well, like they did um, with Beauty and the Beast. Like Beauty and the Beast and now with Power Rangers and It is uh, dumb though. I mean that Malaysia wanted to censor the movie one and good on Disney for refusing as well. Yeah, I mean, for me I'm just I'm I'm pretty uh, indifferent overall in terms of like how that stuff is presented. I mean, I'm not uh, gay or autistic, so, but I do. I mean, I understand the plight. I understand, and I'm the, both. No, the need for <laughs> he's gay autistic. I understand the need and desire for representation, and sure. you know, I, I support I do that. Too, yeah, but I think it should be genuine. I don't. I think that when you're, it like, does feel genuine though in the movie. I have to say, that, the and, LG, that's, the, and that's the thing. As long as it yeah. feels genuine, then yeah. I'm fine with it. It's when it's shoehorned in and basically like thrown in your face. And it's kind of like, you don't need to do that. I, I get it. Most people get it. Yeah, sure. There's people that are still against that kind of thing. And that's you know, whatever. They'll get over it. They're going to have to. But at the same time, it's like, I think everything should happen in just a natural way. No, and it does know? in the movie though. I mean, it's not shoehorned in. It's, it's, it's something, you know, and, and the thing that I liked about it was that at least it was some character development. That's my big problem with the movie is that there's none. They just feel like cardboard cutouts. So at least it was something that yeah. made that them character some personality distinct. And some... Yeah, 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 it made yeah, that totally. gave them some and I, and personality I agree. And, I think and, that's some, a great... and some issues and some drama. It was finally, it was something, but it was, but, but, but it's also minor. It's not, you know, I feel like maybe they didn't even go far enough with it. You know, they could have maybe gone a little bit yeah, deeper into that. Far, yeah, far and deeper. Yeah. But maybe anyway, that. well, speaking of controversial things on uh, in entertainment. Iron Fist debuted this uh, past week or on Friday, and a lot and of reviews the, and the came wake in. was held the next day. <laughs> uh, a lot of a lot of critics came in, just kind of took to bashing it and hating on it. And uh, I dare say that a vast majority of that was motivated by basically some virtue signaling and some moral stances on the fact that. Iron Fist was cast as a white guy since he was a white guy in the comics and has always been a white guy in the comics since forever. And they decided that they're just going to tear the show apart as uh, as a result of him not being cast as Asian. That's my theory. If any critics have a problem with it, you can take it up with me. That's they fine. could have cast him as Asian, though. Let's get no, real. They shouldn't have. That would they have been fucking c- could have easily cast him as Asian, and it would have no. been fine. It, I, I would have honestly it would have taken me out of the show. I'd be mean, like, why? Well, what is the I don't purpose? Know. You know, why? I, from well, what I, a, from, the problem oh. with that, like, isn't the whole thing about diversity, like casting, like the best actor, like who cares what race they are? But you are? see, I hear so, he's not the, the best actor, well, though. And I, 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 we're going to get to that in a second. But like the fact that he's white, that 
that somehow becomes a problem, despite the fact that that's how his origin is in the comics. Like, yeah, uh, it's it's one me. of those things where somebody's trying to make issues like, well, you have an, you had an opportunity. It's like, well, why don't you bitch about Ben Affleck being cast as Batman? You had an opportunity to cast a black guy. Why mm-hmm. didn't you? It's, well, why not? it's a bullshit argument. They and could have I a black think, Batman. Well, but why didn't? Why is there no controversy? They could have a black Batman, though. I think that'd be fine. But it, it, why is man. there no I'd, I'd like controversy? <laughs> why is nobody freaking out and lambasting fucking or or tearing apart Batman because it's Ben Affleck? Because they're, they're used to it, and like somehow there's a white guy doing like kung fu, and Bec- like no, and a like, white guy has people. always and and can white guys not do kung fu? I mean, I study martial arts. Okay, but guys, one thing though, how many? Asian American leads have you seen in movies lately or in big action movies anyway have you seen any are there any that you can think of uh, off the top of my head I think of uh, uh, Glenn from The Walking Dead although he's Glenn dead. from The Walking Dead I mean uh, he's, I think uh, of like Donnie that's Yen. a moss that's yeah, a that's a, that's a that's a you know Glenn from The Walking Dead that's a yeah Donnie Yen in uh, Rogue One he's the best character in Rogue Donnie One Donnie Yen he's not Asian American not Asian not not Asian not Asian okay but why is it let me ask you this why is it Iron Fist's responsibility to fill that gap it's not Iron Fist's responsibility but they could have I'm just saying they could have cast an Asian but they could do that for any character sure they can so why Iron Fist. Well, they've just been, you know, there's there's a lot of whitewashing going on when it comes to Asian American stuff or Asian mysticism, you know. It's and they they, you know, they could have made Doctor Strange Asian too, you know, it would have been fine. You, you, I don't know. Oh, uh, to I didn't me, think. to me, I think they could have the, the Iron Fist thing. I was kind of, you know, not. I, I I'd watch it with an open mind. I'm not going to watch the show just because I don't really like any of the Marvel Netflix shows. I only made it through half the first season of Daredevil. But I don't wow, think that. You suck. I don't know. I think. But they, that's kind of like a weird thing to to say, like about a show that you're never going to watch, too, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just like, I, I'm never going to watch, watch this. Did you watch Luke Cage it, or uh, Jessica you know? Jones? Nope. Oh, all right. But you know, the thing well, is, if it, it's it, my 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 issue with that though is there's just there isn't a lot of representation though of, of Asian Americans. I think we're speaking as three white guys, you know, and it's just if you kind of. You love well, comic books. You way. love com- you love comic books though and you're and you're Asian or you're black or something like that. How many characters do you have in the comic books that really represent you that are these iconic characters? Well, I mean, Shang-Chi I think was re- the very first character of Asian character that came out long before Iron Fist. Mm-hmm. And he's Asian American. He's Asian American, is he big time? Is he a like a, ma- a major character that's going to yeah, get his Shang-Chi. own spin-off? Yeah, he's I've the never heard of him. Never heard of him. But well, cuz you're a white guy only looking at white shit. White boy, <laughs> face. I don't know. I Anyways, think they could have re. I listen, think they I, could, I, I understand. Think they could recast I understand the roles. desire for inclusion and things like that. But had they made Shang Chi with a white guy, then I think you'd have uh, some some legs to stand on. Or you, you make a Blade show with a white dude. Yes, mm-hmm. we need to talk. But a white guy cast as Iron Fist is perfectly in line with exactly what the character is. It's not like you're casting Black Panther as a white dude or something like okay. that. It's not. Have happening. you watched the show though? Have I any, watched the entire show. Watched show. I watched the entire show, and guess what? I have also I watched loved the it. show. Mm-hmm. I loved Iron Fist. I thought really? it was great. And I went into it, listened to all the critics, and I was like, uh, I guess I'll check out the first episode. It sounds like it's pretty crappy. But I also heard a lot of people saying, this is bullshit because basically it's got mm-hmm. a white guy. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, that's a pretty bullshit way to look at a fucking show. And it's it's completely it, – it's against everything that you pretend to stand for if that's how you approached it. Mm-hmm. So anyways, I watched the show and I expected that it would probably be pretty crappy. And I ended up loving the show. I love Finn Jones as Iron Fist, as Danny Rand. And I thought Jessica Henwick as uh, 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 Colleen Wing was awesome. She was great. And then I, I think if anybody that bothered me in the show was the one that keeps popping up is Rosario Dawson, who I like Rosario Dawson as her character Claire that kind of annoyed me because she's – basically trying to be this voice of reason. And that's kind of like her only purpose in the show. And I was got pretty annoying, but I love the mysticism. Yeah. I love the, I thought the martial art had way more action than Jessica Jones and Luke Cage combined, which these are comic book shows. They should have some action, you know, and it was very consistent and it had some of the best villains of any Marvel movie or show that were complex. They were crazy and they were interesting. And I, I I was totally into it from start to finish. I felt that the finale was a little underwhelming, the final episode. But outside of that, I was like, it actually made me more of an Iron Fist fan. So there you go. Well, have you're it. wrong, To throw my, my two cents, <laughs> as someone who's not like fluent with the comic books and stuff, I, I liked it and enjoyed it a lot because it didn't have the, the most clear direction or angle like the other shows, but 
it introduced elements that the other shows didn't go for. Yeah. And even if it didn't like 100% succeed, I really appreciated it for those those moments. Like again, like Iron Fist, he's kind of portrayed as like this young kid, he's very headstrong, always in over his head. He, and he's kind of always fucking up a little bit, doesn't always know the right way and occasionally he has these like cheesy one-liners, but it made it fun. Yeah. Like, I agree. And I'm like, "Oh shit, like it it wasn't trying to be so adult oriented all the time. Like it it was a, a allowed to have fun from time to time, you know, and I, I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed watching it actually. Yeah. I was, well, you're both horribly wrong. And, and now because we're both white guys that liked it, we are (laughs) essentially white devils and we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. We're not allowed. We should just stop speaking. Yeah. There's no way we have any legitimacy. Stripped. At the very least, we haven't been called cunt face yet. So not yet. The show's still young. I'm sure that's coming. Uh, so, anyways, we uh, that was mine and Sean's take on Iron Fist. Uh, I I don't I'll, 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 I don't, I'll say I don't this, think though. that everybody's gonna love Iron Fist, and I and I'm not trying to delegitimize people that didn't like it for very specific reasons. But if your very specific reason is because they cast a white guy, I really don't care what you. Have well, to say, I'll tell you. I'll honest. tell you. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If Iron Fist was cast as an Asian American lead, I wouldn't have watched it either. All right. Fair enough. That's Iron Fist. I recommend it. It's not for everybody. I'm sure there's, you know, again, people that won't like it for whatever reason, but um, I think it's the best of the Netflix shows just outside of Daredevil. So there you have it. Now Chris is going to talk about a bunch of movies. Let's hear it. All right. Well, I just got back from seeing Life. <laughs> and it is now the best movie of the year. Don't go see any other movies after you see Life because nothing will And it's definitely it. about Venom from Spider-Man. It, it gave right? my life Venom new meaning. Venom is in the post credit sequence. <laughs> no, I mean, could have been, you know, I mean, I think that that whole thing started, though, where some fanboy journalist went to the junket on the weekend, saw the movie and made a joke. And I think it just kind of spun out of control. And now I think the studio is using it as a way to kind of get people to maybe actually go see the movie because I don't think it's tracking very well. I think it's probably going to flop. The reason is it actually it actually really sucks. Um, it, it's just another alien clone. Uh, it, it, the one thing that's good about it is that it really reminds you or makes you appreciate how good Ridley Scott's Alien actually is, because life is essentially a clone of that film. I mean, they really, really copy it, um, that movie's DNA, and just, they get everything wrong. I mean, the characters are boring, um, the, creature, the creature design is boring, it's only 100 minutes, but it feels endless, I looked at my watch actually about a half hour into the, about an hour into the movie, thinking that it was almost over, and I couldn't believe that only an hour had gone by. I was actually kind of depressed. Um, I like Jake Gyllenhaal a lot. Give him they gave him nothing to do in the movie. Just couldn't have been more anonymous or generic if they had tried. And I don't know what. Are we talking spoilers here? Or are we keeping it spoiler? Uh, no, it's spoiler free. Uh, they're all like Damn that it. though. Every I'll ask you later. every single character in the movie though is just absolutely generic. Rebecca Ferguson, who I thought was so good in uh, in in Last Mission Impossible, I just I don't know what she was doing here. It, it, it's just ugh. Does she right. wear a bikini or no, show no, 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 legs no, in a no, yellow no, dress? No, because no, none of them do any of that. You don't see anybody's Jake skin. Jake Gyllenhaal does not wear a bikini either. No, he does not, unfortunately. Okay. Well, um, well, Ryan Reynolds is worthless. Ryan Reynolds basically <laughs> plays plays uh, Ryan Reynolds. Makes a couple How of jokes. How dare you, sir? Uh do not Bias. speak ill of Ryan I also, Reynolds. I also, I don't know. I, I also feel that that guy, though Daniel Espinosa. I mean, I've talked about this on the podcast before. I really think he's kind of a generic director, not a very good one. I, I haven't liked any of his movies except for the movie he made in Sweden, um, Easy Money, which I thought was pretty decent. Um, I, I really didn't care for Safe House. I thought that was super overrated, and um, Child Forty Four was a mess. Should have been great, but just a horribly made film. And uh, and this one too, just very boring, very dull. Um, there's really, I, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I, I don't. The trailers made it look boring, but the movie takes those low expectations and goes even lower. And I'm surprised that it's getting mixed reviews because I, I thought it would have gotten horrible reviews. None of them, nobody was any good in the film. It was just, it was, it was just absolutely dull, abysmal from start to finish. Nice. So that's well, life. thank you. I was not going to see the movie to begin with, and I will continue to not go see the movie. So. And then I saw Appreciate Power that. Rangers. It's morphin' time. Boop, 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 boop. All right, tell boop, us what boop, you thought boop, of that, boop, boop, cunt face. 
Uh, well, that's how I got okay. called cunt face, actually, is from my review of that movie. I actually didn't mind it. I was fine with it. I gave it a 6 on 10. It's a, you know, it's like a, my buddy summed it up best when he said it's like a $100 million pilot for the C, for a CW show. And that really is what it feels like. You know, they don't actually morph until the last half hour of the movie. 90 minutes goes by without them ever putting the suits on. What the hell do they what? do in the Is it meantime? two hours? Training, training montages. It's two hours and three minutes. And I looked at my watch. They get into their suits at about the 95-minute mark. Why is it two hours? That seems a little long for me. Yeah, yeah, and they get into their suits at the 95-minute mark. So there's probably, with credits, about 15 or 20 minutes of them in the in the Power Rangers suits, which is, I'm sure, disappointing. But uh, a lot of training montages. <laughs> a lot of that. Um, it's not Good. bad, though, for what it is. It's Well, you know, the one thing that I liked about it was that uh, I thought the director, Dane uh, Israelite, at least gave it a bit of energy. Um which which they didn't do in life. Another thing I hated about life and Power Rangers does the same thing is that they do one of those long extended tracking shots, which I think is becoming such a cliche. It's the new shaky cam, I think. They're just trying to look cool. They're trying to look cutting edge by copying what you know other directors have done a lot better. Um, and Power Rangers has a moment like that as well. Um, the cast of Power Rangers is not very good. I didn't like really any of the any of the Rangers except for R.J. Uh, Siler. Um, Brian Cranston, you can see him pretty much collecting a paycheck. You can see the, do- the, the dollar signs in his eyes. Uh, Elizabeth <laughs> Banks seems to be having fun, though. I think I think Brian Cranston probably did his role in about a day, though. And um, Elizabeth Banks too. I mean, she's you know not in it that much, and I think she seems to be having some fun. She chews some scenery. Does Elizabeth yeah. Banks do like karate with the uh, Rangers, or does she just kind of stand there and send minions after them? Well, sends like computer animated guys after them so she never actually fights stuff. anybody oh uh, you know she's a little bit but not too much you know she does some yeah. stuff uh it's 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 i don't know it, it's it, uh, it, i but it, for what it was it was okay it wasn't painful to sit through i was okay with it but what got me into trouble was that in my review i wrote that the original show was was garbage which it which it is i really think it's 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 i i dare anybody to go back and watch a single episode Did from you the use original the word run. garbage that's I didn't say why. garbage. I didn't say garbage. I just said that that the only reason people like it is because is the power of nostalgia. And if people were to go back and rewatch it, and I actually dared people to go back and rewatch any of the old episodes DG, of the show and tell me that it's no, but tell me that it's legitimately good though. Put on any episode of that show and tell me that this is legitimately good, not just for nostalgia's sake, not just because you watched it when you were five. It's not good, and they and they try to you know be very faithful to the mythology of the characters, and it's not like you know Power Rangers is not something like a comic book where you could go back on, you know, decades of material written by you know legit writers, you know, and and you could go someplace interesting, and you have a lot of you have a wealth of material to mine. You know, Power Rangers it was just this kind of junky t- kids TV show that was really thinly written, you know, it had a really thin premise, and it's kind of. You know, there's, it's not that interesting. And the movie itself, it pays too much homage to that. You know, and I think that if they were to go in a s- different direction for the sequel, if there is a sequel, it could potentially be a lot better. Well, they want five more. Not well, just I don't know if sequel. that's going to happen, though. Let's see how it does at the box office first. I mean, I don't know. I think they spent a lot of money on it. Let's see if it even breaks even. Um, I mean, they have Krispy Kreme Power Rangers donuts. Well, because Krispy Kreme this is a is major serious. plot point in the film must be a masterpiece then. not sure if you're serious no i am very yeah. serious <laughs> i am very serious <laughs> you can Kreme. get they have a donut with each uh yeah yeah and it's rings. a it's a weird little product tie and Krispy cream has a major part in the film nice i can't i can't complain about that because i love Krispy cream i think they suck those sweet devils man i'm a tim hortons you think they man suck? i'm a no, tim, I'm a tim, tim I'm hortons a t- right up your i'm asshole. a tim hortons man you fucking I can't wait to see Man, you again. A, a fresh Krispy Kreme right off the press. Fuck, I'm gonna inflict so much violence upon you, Chris. Have you ever had Krispy Kreme? Yes, they existed briefly in uh, in Canada, and then we th- ran them out of town. Because <laughs> you like your half-assed Tim Hortons bullshit. I like. I'm I've actually, never had Tim Hortons. I'm so actually more think. of a Dunkin' Donuts fan myself, though. I have to be honest. For what? the donuts? Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, I like Come Dunkin' Donuts. On. You think I mean, those? Do- like okay, you think those like... donuts? I mean, those are the most generic. Their grocery store donuts are better than fucking Dunkin' Donuts. I like I like uh, buying though. When I want to get really good donuts, I'll go to like a, a kind of like a crap place and, and and stuff like that and get like like artisanal donuts. Artisanal. <laughs> I'm a Frenchman. I'm a French boy from Montreal. Vous aimez pas? No, they they bang. J'aime des bang. Si je voulais un bang, 
Je vais dire oui, donnez-moi un bang. <laughs> Oh I like God. when the donuts are made out of potatoes. Potato donuts. You're such a cunt Spud face. nuts. Spud nuts. Those are great. Um, All right. But anyway, tell us about, tell yeah, us about goddamn train spotting. Yeah. Okay. Well, train spotting was 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 <laughs> yeah, okay. was the rare good movie that came out this week. T two train spotting, and that's is there a called. Terminator in train spotting too? There is not a Terminator in train spotting too. But I'll say this: the guys are all back. And they look great, maybe too good for ex heroin addicts, uh, but uh, <laughs> they haven't missed the beat since the first movie. As it's as good a sequel to Train Spotting as you could have gotten, I think. I don't know that one was ever necessary. You know, to me, making a Train Spotting sequel is the same way as like if somebody was to say, "Let's make a sequel to Godfellas," or "Let's make a sequel to Boogie Nights." You know, I think it stood up well enough on its own. And I also think that it was a movie that really kind of came along at the right time typed into the tapped into the zeitgeist in a special way that you can't duplicate but i think that as far as sequels as 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 good as of a sequel to that could have been the movie was and they did interesting things with the characters because they are 20 years older and they acknowledge that in the film and they the writing is very good the directing is very good and the acting is very good and i i had a really good time with it probably one of the better movies i've seen this year I've been, Sean I've will been probably be too. fucking disappointed because Sean's a bitch. But uh, <laughs> damn, that's fucking hard. That, was, that came out of nowhere. Yeah, I said I know, nothing. I know what your feelings <laughs> are on the original Chain Spotting, and you whined and you whined and whined about the <laughs> well, sequel. We just we just had a conversation about this. I was talking to Chris after he saw the movie, and he and I told him, you know, I'm like, you know what? I've been listening to the the soundtrack while I've been jogging lately, and it's kind of like not only do I enjoy the soundtrack, um, but it's kind of opened my mind up to accepting a sequel to Train Spotty. But then he just assaults me. <laughs> yeah, you've been assaulted front. with oh, words. You've been smacked right. At you. I would file charges. You should. God, it's a what hate a crime. Crime take, get face. your phone out now. And take crime. They were the right. That he's left. So should we tell everybody what cunt face comes from? Uh, you know what? I, while you were saying that, I never actually found that actual comment that says cunt face oh you did maybe we uh, might have we might have deleted it we do you know, maybe we do monitor well, our comments well on, was that on, on, the, U- no, 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 on YouTube? the youtube channel on the youtube review okay yeah i couldn't find it on the youtube yeah but um so at this point in the show usually we might read some comments or questions about the uh, joe blow movie podcast and if you are listening and want to comment or ask us a question feel free to do so but i'd like to take this moment because it's a golden moment i believe to actually read some of the comments <laughs> for Chris's reviews for Power Rangers. So we're going to cycle through some of them, Let's and I can't this. wait to hear Chris's reactions. We do, um, we so do have some questions via Twitter, but it we might can just save be, that it, for It might week. just be me howling some of them on are the other side really of weeping. It could be. So the, the top comment, the top voted comment is, so this guy complains that movie uses too much source material. And I know this isn't grammatically correct, but I want to stay true to the comment. I'm sorry, buddy. But you're not the audience for this. If you think using source material is bad, I doubt he is complaining about Marvel, Marvel using their own source material. I want them to use the gigantic <laughs> mythology behind the Zordon era. I didn't know it was a fucking era. Uh, era. Why would I want them to stop? This review doesn't compute in my mind. Dot, dot, dot. That's what I, how it ends. I like this one where he says he doesn't Chris. know what Power Rangers is about and good messages that Power Rangers movie is trying said to fans <laughs> about diversity, superhero who had autism, about fighting against evil with your friends. <laughs> with your friends. As I, I, as I often do with my friends. Uh, here's fighting another one. Evil with Sa- your friends. Sounds like they need someone with a less biased opinion oh, to yeah. review movies. Well, yeah, because a film critic having an opinion is horrible. You biased cunt face. Here's a favorite comment of mine, and I actually crops up pretty often. I don't have a problem, but obviously some people do. So here's what it says. OMG, dude, take your fucking time. Stop doing these fucking videos like you have to be under four minutes. If you are reading a script, then fucking breathe. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you, you can you can go a little longer or should i just do them there, super sl- hi like i my think name. i think i like the speed myself because like that makes people it more interesting it, though that's the they thing they can replay it like they can you can rewind like it's a video you don't have I don't get it. I myself, like to put but... energy into it though when I'm doing it. That's the thing. It's just I don't I hate those YouTube videos where it's the guy saying, "Hi. I'm here with a review of Power Rangers." 
You know, I like to put <laughs> Is in, that I the put in some Utopia re- I want to yeah, I w- I'd like to put in some energy. And I don't want the thing to run 7 minutes long. I, would, I want it to try and run 4 minutes. Well, actually cause... they we we do want them to run longer. People apparently want them longer now. Ugh, People want longer YouTube so, videos. So, this next one. So here we have the retarded review oh. of an idiotic <laughs> snob that came in already hating the plot and story because he wasn't a fan of the original material. I can't see this being totally biased at all. We're not done. Get wrecked, you fetus fucking cunt. Whoa! <laughs> <It's-> <laughs> What? <laughs> it's fine if you want to trash the movie because it's bad, but when you open up with over two fucking minutes of you complaining about the concept alone, it's clear what the issue is here. Wow. What is the <laughs> what issue? Is Wait, what was, did, <laughs> fetus fucking? Is that you what you said? You fetus fucking cunt. I, I mean, you know, you think you've lived a life. And I, I, I mean, Jesus Christ, I, I'm coming from the, the airborne infantry. I've I've seen and heard it all, and then something like this happens, and I hear a new takedown that I never even would have fathomed. You wait, you hey, yeah, whoever that guy is, you just pat yourself on the back for being like <laughs> reaching a level of douchebaggery that I mean, that's just that's commendable. Some to, poor guy who will think, never know who, who a would woman's even touch. think of that. I God, I don't even know this. <laughs> Here's a quick one. Fuck you, bro. <laughs> Way to keep it professional. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, you know, know, like, what happens when these people go and see the movie and if they actually don't like it? Then what? But I, I just like that, like, fuck you, apologies? bro. Like, fuck hey, we're you. still friends, right? Hey, bro. You know, it's funny. I respect you, but fuck you. It's funny. I I've, I've sometimes get emails from people where they're really kind of nasty, and I usually write them back super polite, and then they write me back, and they're like, oh, I'm really sorry. And it's just that well, you're I get, dealing. I used to get. I get those all the time. Man. Yeah, you're dealing with infants, though, and it's just if you want to, you know, what I imagine these people as. Boston. If you go and watch this movie that came out a couple of years ago, um, called Zero Charisma, where I'm actually quoted in the trailer for it saying it's like the fanboy taxi driver. If you if you go and watch this movie Zero Charisma, the lead guy in that movie is exactly what I imagine the trolls being like. The trolls. Just fucking angry fucking guys that are pissed off at everything and everyone. And you know what? I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was a good show. It's not. It really isn't. And you know what? I, I There are a lot of things that I loved when I was a kid that I wouldn't tell you was a good show either. Like, let's say if they made a Captain Power movie. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm not going to go back and tell you that Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future was a great show that holds up well. Well, you know what I think you're what we're witnessing with Power Rangers is that you're seeing a new generation, yes, the next are. generation uh, of of kids growing up. Now, we didn't catch the Power Rangers bug because we were too old. The plain and simple, we missed. It. I was actually twelve when it started, though. So I mean, I wasn't. Uh, that you, old. You're, you missed it. Like my my uh, younger brothers, uh, they uh, no. My youngest brother, he watched it, you know, but he wasn't a huge super fan. But I mean, he mm-hmm. did watch it as a kid, but. Ultimately, like this is just kind of something that skipped us. So I think what you're seeing is a lot of people getting kind of, you know, upset and nasty uh, because of, as you say, I I think it's because of the nostalgia of the show and they take it personally because it was such a huge part of their childhood. Boy, they should go back. And and I think it's basically you have the, the, the millennial generation reaction to Ghostbusters with Power Rangers. You know, you should you should go back. They should go back, though, and listen to some of the behind the scenes stories from Power Rangers, because it's fascinating to see to hear about what those shoots were like. Did you know that the actors it was a totally non-union shoot because the guy was too cheap to to ever pay anybody anything? And they were getting paid about not even not even a thousand dollars an episode. So they were making about twenty four thousand dollars a year at their peak. A lot of them worked part time jobs at McDonald's and shit while doing Power Rangers. That's fucked up. Oh, yeah, and the guy was raking in hundreds of millions of dollars, and he wouldn't give anybody anything. What a greedy bastard. This is Hank, and he's the Hank producer. And, yeah, and he's the producer of this. He just and he's got a star today, movie, didn't he? Yeah, and he's the, <laughs> oh, yeah, funny. and he's the, he runs Saban Films as well. He's the, he's the producer of this movie, too. And he yeah. was just, he was so fucking cheap that he, all of his shows they produced for Fox Kids, they were all non-union shoots, and the guys were, and the, and the cast were making, you know, peanuts. Interesting. Sounds like I, a total I prick. I wasn't aware of all of that. Hi, I'm, I'm well, sorry anyways, thanks for guess, sharing all your reviews. Obviously, we all need to go see Life first, and then don't go, go see, see any of these. Movies. Go see Train Spotting two, and don't see anything. If you have to go see anything, you know, and if you haven't seen it yet, go see Beauty and the Beast. I liked that. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, I thought it was 
it was good, but it was really just kind of obnoxiously over the top. You're obnoxiously over the too, top. Way too singy for me. You know, with you know, <laughs> too si- too singy. Yeah, I mean, it was like I felt like I left the play when it was over. So I, I guess we're not going to do that musical episode of the podcast no. then. Jesus, where Christ, we just sing the no. entire thing? Go Don't ahead, you hate Chris. it when sitcoms do that? Take, they do take like us a musical with some, episode with some Don Johnson. Speaking I of Don Johnson, did you see my my photos on uh, on Facebook the other day? I hardly ever go on Facebook anymore. I went out. Uh, well, you liked them. I went out. I went out. Uh, I, did? <laughs> I went out vinyl shopping with my girlfriend and her friend. And um, I liked her, your comment that you had said about it. I her I her didn't... friend found Don Johnson Heartbeat on vinyl and bought it for herself. And I wanted it. And she was using it to tease me, saying, "Ha ha! You'll never get this vinyl record. It's mine now." And then I found a copy as well and bought it. And she wasn't able to hold that power over me anymore. So we both bought matching uh, copies of Don Johnson's power Johnson of Heartbeat. Don Johnson's vinyl. <laughs> the power of Don. So we both bought matching vinyl copies, vintage vinyl copies of Don Johnson's Heartbeat. Mine was a dollar ninety nine. That sounds about right. <laughs> I listened to the first song. It was Heartbeat. It was rocking. Soon as the second st- song started, I had to run over to the record player. You're just, like, no, it's- <laughs> <laughs> we're done here oh boy <laughs> that'll be it Don thank you nope. <laughs> alright well that's it for us this week uh, appreciate all you guys tuning in um, You know, check us out uh, on iTunes leave us a review uh, give us some give us some stars uh, we could certainly use it um, also just a quick announcement uh, myself and Sean We'll be at CinemaCon next week, so uh, if you enjoy listening to us on the podcast, you're going to get even more of that, as we'll be doing stand-up reports uh, after each panel at CinemaCon. Uh, just like stand up, so you guys, so you guys will me, be telling so. jokes. You guys will be telling jokes. Sure, we'll probably have some jokes. We're gonna have some. We plan on having some fun with it and having a good time and bringing you guys all the information. Uh, that will surely spew out of CinemaCon. If, if you're not aware of it, I actually will have an article up uh, tomorrow or Friday that gives you a little more details on what CinemaCon is if you're not sure. Uh, but it is going to be big. There's going to be a lot of first looks, screenings. We'll see Pirates 5 and a couple other films. Not sure. I would be talk about shocked after, if they let you talk about Pirates 5 after yeah, you see so. it. I mean, we could say we saw it, but that's pretty much... I mean, it's already out there that it's it's playing. Um, but we'll also have a lot of celebrity interviews. We're going to do some red carpet. So we're going to be busy. We're going to have fun and uh, look forward to bringing all that stuff Celebrity to interviews. And, Are you guys interviewing Don Johnson? And I'm pretty sure Don's not going to be there. But, Damn. Uh, yeah, they're just going to have Ben Affleck, Charlize Theron, uh, tons of others are going to be there. So it's kind of a it's kind of a crapshoot with the press lines because you just never know who you're going to get. But we'll oh, if you if you see for, Ben, tell him I said hey. I'll let Ben know. So, hey, Chris Bumery said hey. He's going to be like okay. He's going to be he's going to be like oh Fine. man is he here? <laughs> he's going to have like a like a secret picture that he took of you. From the Justice League set on his phone, he'd be like, <laughs> "Yeah, they can watch." And I'd be he like, just, "Jesus, yeah. this just got he weird just, as fuck." He just talks to it every night. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, "Hey, Chris, I hope you're well." Yeah, sure that, positive that's happening. Anyway, so that's coming next week. So yeah, tell him I love. Tell him I loved Live by Night. <laughs> that was a lie. I actually did like it. You didn't love it. I liked it. Good for you. Uh, also, check now us out on Jogo.com. Every day uh, for news, reviews, and uh, everything else that you could uh, possibly want for for movie news. Uh, and then also check out our YouTube channels for uh, original videos, at U- uh, Joe Blow videos, and for all your trailers and featurettes and whatnot, uh, Joe Blow movie trailers. You got it all, man. If you guys, you want your movie news, we got everything. We got it all. Just come to us. Come thank you for me. your efforts, and thank you for joining us, Cunface Chris. Oh, you're welcome. Beat us fucking cunt. Beat us fucking cunt. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. That's nuts. That's crazy. That's hardcore, man. That's, that's something. I mean, Ooh. that's like when you're like, you're so deeply rooted in hate that like stuff pops into your head that you, I mean, you could just never fathom that. I mean, I would feel like maybe I have some head issues if I'm saying things like that. Be like, man, why, why did I even think that? That's some Brett Easton Ellis American psycho shit right there. You like Huey Lewis on the news?